The Battle of Changban was fought between the warlords Cao Cao and Liu Bei in October 208 in the late Eastern Han Dynasty of China. The battle took place at Changban. Chapter 1 Background After Cao Cao unified northern China under his control in 207, he made arrangements for a southern campaign on Jing province, which was governed by Liu Biao at the time. Initial minor invasions led by Xia Ho Dun were repelled by Liu Biao's vassal Liu Bei, whose forces were stationed at Xinye County at the northern border of Jing province. Following that, Cao Cao personally led his armies south to attack Jing province in August 208. Around late August or September, when Cao Cao's forces had reached Wanking, Liu Biao died of illness and was succeeded by his younger son, Liu Kong. Liu Kong's advisors Kui Yue and Fu Xun convinced Liu Kong that he could not resist Cao Cao even with Liu Bei's help, so Liu Kong agreed to surrender. Liu Bei, who was at Fanqing at the time, was not informed of Liu Kong's decision to surrender. When Liu Bei became suspicious, he sent an attendant to Xiangyong to question Liu Kong, and only then would Liu Kong pass the news to Liu Bei through his subordinate Song Zhong. Dismayed, Liu Bei drew his sword on Song Zhong, but did not kill him. Liu Bei then called for a council of his advisors. Zhuge Liang suggested that Liu Bei should attack Liu Kong to secure Jing province and defend against Cao Cao there, but Liu Bei rejected this and said, as Liu Biao was dying, he entrusted his orphans to me. I cannot turn from this obligation and seek my own advantage. How am I to face Liu Biao after I die? Not willing to fall into the hands of Cao Cao, Liu Bei gathered his men and marched southward. As he passed Xiangyong he called out to Liu Kong, but Liu Kong dared not see him and hid. Many officials and civilians of Xiangyong followed Liu Bei as he left, as he was greatly respected by the people. Between 28 September and 26 October 208, Liu Kong set out from Xiangyong towards Xinye to receive Cao Cao surrendering Jing province. Cao Cao took command of Jing province's military, especially its naval fleet, a component which Cao Cao's forces lacked. Fearing that Liu Bei would take the strategic Jiangling County in the south, Cao Cao swiftly gave chase to Liu Bei with a 5,000-strong elite cavalry force, leaving his baggage behind. As Liu Bei was bringing along more than 100,000 unarmed people and thousands of carts of luggage, his force could not move very quickly. Someone suggested to Liu Bei that he should abandon the people for his safety, but Liu Bei did not have the heart to desert them when the people risked their own lives to follow him. Instead, Liu Bei had Guan Yu sail ahead down the Han River with a detachment of several hundred ships and take a roundabout route to Jiangling, where they planned to rendezvous. Chapter 2 The Battle Cao Cao and his cavalry caught up to Liu Bei's congregation at Changban, Dongyong, and Liu Bei had to flee for his life, galloping south with Zhang Fei, Zhao Yun, and Zhuge Liang, while leaving his family and the populace behind. Cao Cao's forces captured most of the unarmed civilians and Liu Bei's baggage. Chu Xu, a friend of Zhuge Liang who was also serving Liu Bei at the time, requested leave from Liu Bei and left to serve Cao Cao after learning that his mother was captured by Cao Cao's forces. Cao Cao's subordinate Cao Chun also captured Liu Bei's two daughters during the battle. Zhang Fei commanded twenty horsemen as rear guard. He sent his troops into a nearby wooded area, and had them move about frenetically as though their number was greater than it actually was. He then stood at the bridge, looking fierce and shaking his lance, he shouted, I am Zhang Yid. Come and battle me to the death. Believing there was an ambush in the woods behind Zhang Fei, none of Cao Cao's men dared to go near him. Zhang Fei and his troops then crossed the bridges and destroyed them, buying time for Liu Bei to escape. As Zhang Fei retreated with Liu Bei, Cao Cao ordered his men to build pontoon bridges and launch an assault, but a timely arrival of Guan Yu and his forces prevented Cao Cao from fully attaining victory. In the chaos, Zhao Yun disappeared to the north, prompting suspicion that he had surrendered to Cao Cao. When someone reported that to Liu Bei, Liu Bei angrily threw a G and said Zilong would never desert me. 
Surely enough, Zhao Yun came back with Lu Bei's infant son Lu Shen along with Lady Gan. With this, Zhao Yun was promoted to General of the Standard. Turning east from Changban, Lu Bei and the remnants of his party had crossed the Han River to the east where Lu Qi, Lu Biao's elder son, still held control of Jiangxia commandery. They met Guan Yu's fleet and over 10,000 men led by Lu Qi at Han Ford. Together, they sailed down the river to Xiaoku, in present-day Wuhan, Hubei. Cao Cao did not follow up in immediate pursuit. The main objective of his drive to the south had been the base at Jiangling County, and he pressed on south to secure that base first. Chapter 3, Aftermath After the Battle of Changban, the land of Jing province west of the Han River became territories of Cao Cao. Cao Cao entered Jiangling County, and pacified the officials and peasants there. Cao Cao's advisor Jia Xu suggested that Cao Cao should make full use of the resources in Jing province to settle his troops before further territorial expansions, but Cao Cao preferred to use the momentum from his victories to attack the Jiangdong region next. Lu Su, an advisor to the Jiangdong warlord Sun Quan, was originally on a mission to offer condolences for Lu Biao's death. By the time he reached Jing province, however, Lu Kong had already surrendered and Lu Bei had fled south. Lu Su went to see Lu Bei at Changban and, after Lu Bei's defeat, followed him to Xiaoku. There he asked where Lu Bei was heading after, and Lu Bei replied that he plans to take refuge under Wu Ju, an old friend, in the distant Kangwu commandery. To this, Lu Su dissuaded Lu Bei from joining Wu Ju, saying Wu Ju was only an ordinary fellow who would not be independent for long, and persuaded Lu Bei to form an alliance with his lord Sun Quan against Cao Cao. Lu Bei was pleased at this suggestion, and sent Zhuge Liang to follow Lu Su back to meet Sun Quan and secure the alliance. The successful formation of the Sun Lu alliance led to the Battle of Red Cliffs shortly after in the same year, where the allied forces defeated Cao Cao's overwhelming fleet, driving him back north and forming the basis of the Three Kingdoms. Chapter 4, In Romance of the Three Kingdoms In the 14th century historical novel Romance of the Three Kingdoms, the battle is romanticized into a showcase of the power and bravery of Zhang Fei and Zhao Yun. Lu Bei's wife Lady Mi and infant son Adieu are isolated from the rest, during an attack by Cao Cao and his cavalry. Zhao Yun braves danger by fighting his way through enemy lines in search of Lady Mi and Adieu. He encounters the enemy general Xia Ho En, defeats him and takes Cao Cao's prized Qinggang sword from him. When Zhao Yun finally finds Lady Mi and Adieu beside a well, he urges them to mount his horse quickly, but Lady Mi refuses as she does not want to be a burden to Zhao Yun. She entrusts Adieu to Zhao Yun and commits suicide by throwing herself into the well. Zhao Yun then straps Adieu to his body and fights his way out against overwhelming numbers of enemy forces, bringing Adieu safely back to Lu Bei. Cao Cao's forces pursue Zhao Yun until they arrive at Changban Bridge, where Zhang Fei stands guard alone. Zhang Fei bellows a challenge at the enemy and shocks Xia Ho Jai to death. Cao Cao's soldiers also observe that the woods behind Zhang Fei are clouded in dust and believe that there is an ambush, so they retreat without a fight and Zhang Fei destroys the bridge and retreats as well. Zhang Fei had earlier ordered his men to tie tree branches to the tails of their horses and ride around in the woods, churning up dust to create an illusion of an ambush. By then, Zhao Yun has returned with a due to his father safely. When he presented a due to Lu Bei, the warlord throws his infant son to the ground and exclaims that his son had nearly cost him one of his best warriors. Zhao Yun catches a due in time and reaffirms his allegiance to Lu Bei, pledging to serve his lord with his life, and he does so, serving him until a due succeeds his father later. Chapter 4 Section 1 Historicity Zhao Yun's biography in the Sanghazi briefly stated that during the Battle of Changban, after Lu Bei abandoned his family and fled, Zhao Yun protected Adieu and Lady Gan and escorted them to safety. Both Lady Gan and Lady Mi also survived the battle. 
Zhang Fei's biography also briefly mentioned that Zhang Fei remained behind with twenty horsemen to block Cao Cao's pursuing forces. The bridge was already destroyed when Zhang Fei bellowed a challenge, similar in tone to the one in the novel, but without the highly exaggerated effect on the enemy. Cao Cao's men did not dare to come near and Zhang Fei was safe. Xia Ho En and Xia Ho Jai are fictional characters. Chapter 5 in popular culture. The Battle of Changban is the highlight of Zhao Yun's and Zhang Fei's story mode in Koei's video game series Dynasty Warriors. The battle is also featured in the 2008-2009 two-part epic film Red Cliff.